Hi, my name is Dr. Robert Greisman with COVIDinstitute.org. So um, your wait is over. I'm finally getting to the long-awaited prebiotic, probiotic, and what they do in long COVID. Basically, how to select what probiotic to use for what. The microbiome is very crowded. Uh, there's very little room. Um, so when you're taking a probiotic in general, it doesn't really have much space to establish itself. So whether it's path pathologic or beneficial bacteria there, uh, there's not a lot of room uh, to introduce new, new species in there. Let's talk about prebiotics. What are prebiotics? They are food for your microbiome. That's what the beneficial bacteria and really anything in, in your gut eat. So it's mostly an anaerobic environment, no oxygen. And probiot prebiotics come from high fiber foods. They come from soluble fiber products, such as um, fructo oligosaccharides, uh, galacto oligosaccharides, or transgalacto oligosaccharides. That's a mouthful. Um, so what happens is these prebiotics are fermented by your gut microbiome and they produce short chain fatty acids, lactic acid, butyric acid, and propion propionic acid. So these serve as a food source for the bacteria uh, to generate ATP. Let's talk about some species. And when I'm talking about species here, it would be something like dog versus cat, okay? So each of these species is a dog. So lactobacillus, this is a big one, as, as, in, as is um, bifidobacterium. So these two are very big. They both produce lactic acid. Lactobacillus helps generate GABA and uh, brain-derived neurotropic factor and stimulates the vagus nerve, okay? But what happens if there's not enough lactobacillus species in your gut microbiome? Well, you can develop irritable bowel syndrome, behavioral issues, affective symptoms, anhedonia. How many times have I been asked, what do you do about anhedonia? Well, here you go. Energy loss concentration problems, appetite, sleep. What does this kind of sound like? It sounds like symptoms of long COVID. What can you treat with lactobacillus? Well, intestinal distension, inflammation, visceral pain, mood, and effective symptoms, okay? Um, bifidobacterium, again, produces GABA and serotonin, serotonin, 5-HT. What happens if you don't have enough bifid bifidobacterium in your gut? Well, depression, anxiety, cognitive impairment, autism, ADHD, and fu functional gastrointestinal disorders such as irritable bowel syndrome. What happens um, if you get additional bifidobacterium into your gut? Well, it can help with behavioral symptoms with digestive systems, symptom clearing, neurodegenerative protection, and visceral pain again. Uh, bacillus. So this comes in, in several varieties. Uh, this also includes the spore-based soil-based uh, probiotic. Uh, it's mainly involved with serotonin production. So again, if it's deficient in your gut, it can cause wall permeability. So basically, leaky gut, Inflama inflammation, oxidative stress, cognitive impairment, uh, behavior, and affective disorders. What if, if you introduce it, it can help decrease inflammation, help with mood regulation. Um, these are some of the other uh, more minor species in your, uh, in your gut and also as probiotics. Um, I'll let you read these at your leisure. Um, let's talk about a bifidobacterium species. So there's, again, these are, this is all species of dog. 
Um, and there's several different types um, within the species. However, these are not strains. These are still all different species, okay? So uh, Bifidobacterium infantis, uh, Breve, Bifidium animalis, Longum, and Lactis uh, each serve in their own way. For instance, within the Bifidium species, there's many different strains, okay? And you can treat the strains kind of like breeds of dogs. Um, they're, they're, they're interbreed, um, they can interbreed, um, and there's many different strains of the same species. Um, lactobacillus species, okay? There's uh, several of these as well. There's Gasseri, Salvarius, Selva um, Remnosus, boy, I don't know who made up these names. Plantarum, Ruteri, Lactis, and Acidophilus. There's also a few others um, that exist, but you may want to watch out with histamine. If you have a histamine tolerance, I'm not going to mention those. But you should remember these because some of them are, are present in the protocols I'm, I'm going to mention here shortly. Then we have... Um, Oh, I'm not going to pronounce this. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and uh, Streptococcus uh, thermophilus. Again, this one is no good for histamine intolerance. You'll see why this is important here in a minute. So here's the law histamine strains. I'm going to leave this um, for you guys to read at your leisure. There's no reason for me to try to read these uh, Latin names. So let's talk about the SIM-1 protocol. Uh, this was based on a recent study done uh, done in China, and they use what's called the SIM01 formula. So I did some research to find out what was in it, and these are the probiotic species that are in it, okay? The uh, adolescent, adolescentis, bididum, and longum. And it also has three different uh, prebiotics in there as well. Okay, and this helped with uh, some of the symptoms of long COVID, uh, specifically um, brain fog and fatigue. There's another uh, protocol that was just uh, released as a pre-study. You're welcome to look this up. It's called VSL number three, and it's actually available commercially uh, called VisBiome. It um, contains several different species um, of of a probiotic, and these are listed here as well. I hope you enjoyed this talk. I tried to keep it brief and uh, to the point. Thank you.